Hey everybody. One of the most difficult things about postmodern theory is that it's notoriously difficult to define. Almost every postmodern thinker has their own opinion on what postmodernism is, and many of them differ quite wildly. The easiest way to define postmodernism is to take the word apart. Post, after, modernism. However, some critics take postmodernism to mean that it is a rejection of modernism, and others say it's a more extreme version of modernism. Still others say it's actually both at the same time, even though they seem kind of contradictory. In order to realistically limit the scope of our discussions for this course, we're going to focus on the three thinkers that Andrew Butler mentions in his article, Postmodernism and Science Fiction. Francois Lyotard, Frederick Jameson, and Jean Baudrillard. There are many other important thinkers in postmodernism, Jacques Derrida, Michel Foucault, Brian McHale, but the three thinkers that Butler mentions do a very good job of encapsulating a lot of what concerns postmodern literary theories. Today we'll start with Francois Lyotard. Lyotard was a French critic and philosopher. He began to explore most of the ideas we'll discuss in his 1979 book La Condition Postmoderne, Rapport sur le savoir, The Postmodern Condition, a report on knowledge. As Andrew Butler argues, Lyotard's contention was that the modern in postmodernism doesn't so much refer to the artistic movement, but the modern condition, a condition brought about by the cultural and philosophical movement now referred to as the Enlightenment. As you might deduce from the name, the general philosophy of the Enlightenment held that true knowledge could be attained through pure reason and logic. Enlightenment thinkers emphasized the power and capability of the individual mind, embraced science as a way of knowing, and advocated overthrowing totalitarian uh, monarchic regimes in favor of states governed by social contracts. Enlightenment philosophy is generally considered the first modern philosophy and continues to exert its influence over history, politics, sociology, you name it. If you've heard of René Descartes, David Hume, John Locke, Isaac Newton, Thomas Hobbes, or Immanuel Kant, you've met the Enlightenment. Now, Leotard felt that the Enlightenment ultimately failed in its attempt to create a more perfect world through reason. As Butler argues, and I quote, Leotard felt the rational state had in fact led to totalitarianism in various forms, and knowledge in the form of information had become a commodity. In short, Leotard took this as a sign that the meta-narrative of the Enlightenment had failed. The meta-what? The meta-narrative. A meta-narrative is a narrative or story which, according to the Oxford English Dictionary, quote, provides a schematic worldview upon which an individual's experiences and perceptions may be ordered. Metanarrative is closely connected to the philosophical term teleology, the study of ends or final causes, especially as related to the evidences of design or purpose in nature. In other words, a teleological philosophy, like a meta narrative, understands the present and past in terms of the ultimate end goal of the future. Enlightenment philosophy was profoundly teleological, and it is founded on beliefs about how the world works and what humanity is capable of. It posited a meta narrative which claimed that humanity could reach its full potential through pure science and reason. What became increasingly clear to Lyotard was that this simply was not true. Science and reason had led to great discoveries, but they had also been the explanation for totalitarian governments, genocide, racism, sexism. Even within scientific fields, pure rational thinking had proven inadequate to explain things like quantum physics or chaos theory. However, rather than replacing one meta narrative with another, Lyotard argues that postmodernism espouses an incredulity towards all meta narratives. Now, the Enlightenment is only one example of a meta narrative, and many others exist. It's one of the more pervasive ones. But any story that explains the way the world was and is and might be, according to some sort of transcendent or universal truth, is a meta narrative. Most religious understandings of the world are based in a meta narrative, a story that understands the past, present, and future in terms of an ultimate purpose or design. Meta narratives aren't inherently bad, and they can inspire people to do great things. However, they also lead to some people believing the ends justify the means. For example, colonialism was able to overlook many of its horrors, the subjugation and slavery of people, the erasure of cultures and languages, because it was founded on a meta narrative, part of the Enlightenment meta narrative, in fact, that claimed that Western society as it was was the height of civilization and human achievement 
And in order for the continued evolution of the human race, it was the job of the West to civilize primitive people. For an example of how pervasive these meta narratives are in our everyday lives, take the following statements. Technology separates us from our humanity and makes us less human. Once we were whole and communal and in touch with the world around us, as we become more industrialized, we lose touch with our true human nature. The history of mankind is about progress. Once we were primitive and uncultured, but slowly and surely we are reaching our potential. Pure reason will help us understand everything in the universe. Rational scientific thought will lead to ethical and social progress. Human beings are inherently cruel, sadistic, and selfish. The only thing that allows us to overcome this nature is... Insert your moral, religious, governmental, or social concept there. The U.S. is a democratic society and thus represents the height of freedom, liberty, and the will of its people. That democracy has been spreading around the world since our inception as a nation and will continue to spread because democracy is the best form of government. Those claims are all based on meta narratives. Now, Leotard says that postmodernism is skeptical towards meta narratives. That doesn't necessarily mean we always reject them. It's just important that we question their claims to truth. Leotard suggests that in space of meta narratives, we begin to understand the world through petit récits, or small, localized narratives that take events in their context and emphasize and accentuate the diversity of human experience instead of the singularity of it. This results in a plurality of meanings and truths, all as valid as the other. Leotard argues that this is not some fall from a once unified world to a fragmented one. In fact, the notion that there was once a whole and now we're fragmented is constructed from meta narratives. The world has likely always been far more complex than we tend to believe. Butler rightly argues that Leotard would not have embraced science fiction wholeheartedly. However, he does do a good job reflecting Leotardian themes in science fiction. I encourage you to take a look at those examples again on page 139 and 140 of his article. Next time we'll talk more about Frederick Jameson.